there have been decisions and fines recently for breach of fiduciary duty. Because of this, a lot of hedge funds have probably already broken their capital standards or margin core levels and are now probably out of business. Listen up. Because I'm about to talk about how other banks like NYCB are going to fail. Let's get paid at the end of the show. The Millionaire Mindset Trading Group's fast-moving momentum news play was pushed today and won 98% of the time. That's something else I'd like to talk about. Now let's talk about what's important. A tweet from 741 Trade said it's funny that banks don't keep a minimum net capital of just $5,000. F did get the bank $225,000. The bank has since closed, but I still want to talk more about this breach. The Arcview Bank is talked about in the first part. Since the bank only had to keep a net balance of $5,000, it must have been pretty small. Other banks clearly need billions, tens, or even hundreds of billions of dollars in cash. In any case, it says between September 29, 2020 and January 25, 2021, what a fun date. Part 15 says Arcview broke the law when it bought and sold stocks for 43 days without having at least $5,000 in net capital. What's interesting is how badly it failed to meet this net capital requirement. The bank needs to have $5,000 on hand at all times. Things could go wrong if it dropped to $42,000 or $4,000, but at least it's still above zero, which means the bank is still healthy and has cash flow. I knew banks could borrow money, but I didn't think they could lose more than what they had. I also didn't think banks or hedge funds could lose a lot of money after having none. I mean, I didn't think hedge funds could borrow $50 billion and then lose more than that. That $50 billion was what I thought would happen. I thought they would lose all their money and have to sell everything they owned. They would get rid of their long positions and close out their short positions. Why does my profit account work that way? If I deposit $55,000 and I trade using leverage, let's say 2-1 or 5-1 to one leverage, but that $5, say, triple zero hit zero, my position gets liquidated, but I'm going to explain with this breach of ruling and associated fine why actually for banks and hedge funds that is seemingly not the case, because it says, and I quote these net capital defici ICs, ranged from $279,000 to $105 to triple zero so they didn't maintain their acquired minimum net capital of $5,000 and they fell short of this $5,000 requirement. By up to $105,000 so actually at some points this bank didn't have positive $5,000 they didn't have zero they had net of $110. Triple zero passed the point of margin call and actually well past the point of that margin call and between September 2020 and October 2021, Arcview also failed to F with FINRA and the SEC 46 same-day notifications of its net capital deficiencies, so they went over an entire year without telling anyone they should have been Aaron called. So if this small bank Arcview went an entire year without being margin called it when they lost way more money than they actually had, and even more than they leveraged, I wonder what else these hedge funds are getting away with. I wonder how long ago some of these hedge funds should have been margin called and I wonder how long they've been escaping those margin calls for. As I said earlier today, we played NVB for a whopping 98% gain. You can see in the pre-market, I alerted NVB and waited for the breakout of $147. That's when I told the team about the break at $183. The stock kept going up after that, as you can see today. After making 87% yesterday, Joe locked in a 47% gain today. Jack Perkins also locked in $1. 118 in profits and Patrick also locked in four or $500 as well. Some absolutely brilliant gains today from my trademark fast moving momentum news play breakout strategy, which I teach in the millionaire mindset trading group. So be sure to sign up using the link in the description below now on that. Note investor turf also tweeted saying AMC AMC entertainment has stated they reached out to the New York stock exchange and relevant authorities concerning issues like FTD synthetic share claims and other questionable activities by Wall Street. However, no action has yet been taken. Now, first off, that's not saying no issues have been found or no action is to be taken. It says no action has been taken just yet, suggesting these relevant authorities are still doing investigations even to this day. And it says, additionally, AMC emphasized that their primary focus is on operating movie theaters and not being a single individual company trying to regulate the entire market. This likely means Adam Aaron does think there's something wrong with AMC's stock if he's gone to the New York Stock Exchange about FTDs, synthetic shares, and other questionable activities, but obviously Adam Aaron is focused on operating movie theaters. He doesn't control the stock market, but as Gary points out, he said a little point is the New York Stock Exchange. 
The SEC, FINRA, and the DTCC are all in on the Ponzi scheme together, and that's likely why no action has yet come to the short sellers, because the SEC, FINRA, and the DTCC are in on the crimes as well, but the French AMCAP has pointed out something with the AMC fundamentals that really shows just how. Much trouble the shorts are really in saying people don't realize that AMC beat quarter four earnings with the Hollywood strike covering all of 2023 shorts worked hard to destroy the industry to meet their narrative and to try and ensure that AMC would go bankrupt, but he said June 2nd will switch the narrative and the sentiment, especially as Tony DeNaro has pointed out from the IMAX earnings call IMAX is reporting that pre-sales on June 2nd are outperforming Oppenheimer pre-sales before suggesting another movie that's going to generate hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars potentially at the box office and with the Hollywood strike covering pretty much the entire of 201232012024 is setting up to be a blockbuster no strike year now New York Community Bank NYCB stock has dropped at least 18% since it was found that their internal processes were not working as well as they should have this information comes from a tweet by Frank's place when i was in accounting school I learned that a big hole in internal controls was bad for both the company and its audit report. That's because there wasn't enough tracking and risk assessment when the loans were being looked at. To put it simply, this is not good. It means New York Community Bank is struggling to assess risk and to value the loans on their books, and it's creating a weakness or deficiency in internal controls. Basically meaning that internally they cannot decide how to value these loans, this is obviously due to the commercial real estate crisis. And it basically means that banks like New York Community Bank have no idea what these loans are actually worth and how much they're going to default on and how much is actually truly recoverable. They don't know how much they need to write tough. They don't know how many losses they need to recognize and they don't know what kind of provisions they need in place because ultimately they have no idea how to value these loans because of the current unprecedented market. And he said this is a few weeks after the bank revealed an unexpected $260 million loss for the fourth quarter of 2023. Maybe that loss of $260 million should have been bigger double the size, triple the size, quadruple. The size may be more, he said, this is the lowest the stock has been since 1997, and maybe bankruptcy for New York Community Bank is just around the corner, and finally investor Turfers tweeted saying China has just imposed a trading ban and levied fines against an individual hedge fund company for engaging in high-frequency trading of index futures, indicating an expansion of its crackdown on quantitative investment strategies to include financial derivatives, it basically says that China has fined a hedge fund for bad high-frequency trading on both stocks and futures. These hedge funds don't just mess with stocks, it looks like. On top of that, they mess with futures, choices, total return swaps, and other types of financial choices. It's good that at least one country is doing something about these acts. I think a lot of other countries, including the U.S., should do the same.